All right, so on the front page, we're going to click this dialog here that says copy paste this in today's le Tuesday's lecture. Mm -hmm. Now scroll down until we see some Python code that starts with from TK enter import. Ends with root dot wait. Yep, yep. We're just going to copy all that. From, from, from TK enter import star all the way down to the bottom. Okay. And then go to your idle window. And I'll wander around and make sure everybody's got it. What are we calling these notes? Well, let's see what next lecture we're on. I think we're on W. Yep. So save as lecture W. And of course, this is Python 2, not Python 3. It's possible this is not going to work, and let me try it. And if I can't get it to work in five seconds, we're going to abandon this little thing. Yeah, all righty. There is a Python, there is a slightly older version of Python. I'm making changes real fast because if I can't get it to work. All righty, it seemed to have worked. It didn't hide that window. We would like for that to window to hide, but it did pop that guy up. All right. So there's a few changes we'd like to make to this little dialog. Anybody not find the code and copy and paste it yet, except for you, because you just walked in. You're going to go to our front page and you just copy some code from the web. Yeah. All right, doesn't work yet because it's in Python 2. We're going to get it to Python 3. Looks like there were just two changes that had to be made. You see that TK enter up at the top? Make it lowercase. Should not automate a difference, but it did. Another difference between Python 2 and 3, and the one that broke the most code when the guy went from Python 2 to 3, is print statements have to have parentheses around them nowadays. Didn't used to. So, looks like this. Put parentheses around them. So I know we did a class, so I'm hoping that this kind of makes a little, that this looks familiar, you know, even if it doesn't make sense. Everybody run it and make sure it pops up a little window. It's not going to look perfect because it's got this spare window we don't want, but we're going to get rid of that spare window. We don't want to see that thing behind. I'm going to drag this out of the way to make sure I see my little dialog. Okay, value equals. That's cool. That's what I want to see. Anybody getting a syntax error when you run it? Got to save it first. Yep, got to save it. Is it going good, guys? I know you're still a little. Yeah. Yeah. Is this what we're supposed to get? Yep, yep, that's good. All right, so this has got a couple of problems. We're going to fix it. One is I want the window, the back, the other, the ugly window to hide. So we're going to add a command up here. That says parent.withdraw. 
So why don't we try that right here on the very first line of the init method? Parent dot withdraw parentheses in parentheses. That should hide that parent window because we don't want to see it. That worked. It hid the window. Now we didn't type in anything, so it just says value is, right? If we had run it and typed in something, it would have been great. Right. And the other thing is, is we can't get the value out of the dialog. There's no way to get the dialog. Um, you, like if you type in 20, our main code can't do anything. We display it, but big whoop, that, that's not good enough. So down in the OK button, we need to create a variable that will hold our result. So after that print statement, but before self.top.destroy, tab over right correctly and type self.value equals self.e.get parentheses in parentheses. Now we need to try it out. So after where it says root dot wait underscore window d top top. Not really liking that syntax, but I guess we can deal with it. I'd rather do something else than that. We're going to put that in a function as well. Let's define this as a function. DEF space get underscore input parentheses s, although we're not using s yet. Maybe we ought to give it a better name like text. T-E-X-T in -E parentheses colon. Tab those two guys over. And we're going to add one more line of code to this. Return D dot value, parentheses in parentheses. So we just added this line. And we just added this line. And we tabbed over these things. And up in our functions, we just added this line. Right? That was new as well. Inside the OK button handler. Now we have a function defined, but we're not calling it yet, so that's kind of lame. We got to fix this so that we call it. Otherwise, when we run it, ain't nothing going to happen. It'll probably display a little window and then nothing to type into. Yeah, lame. All right. So you want us to add the hashtags? On our no, no, no. That's just to show you what I changed, right? Okay. You now that you know you changed them, it's all good. All righty. So let's do something like this: x equals get underscore input parentheses quote input x in parentheses excuse me end quote in parentheses just like our input statements normally look you know it would have been better if instead of calling it get underscore input we called it win underscore input because it's using a window but I'm not going to make that change all right it's letting us type something in String object is not callable. Um, take the parentheses off. My mistake. So, fix again by removing the parentheses. This line. All right. Seems to be working couple more changes. One in particular is if we pass in this message input x, I want it to display input x right there, but as in value. 
right? That doesn't tell us what to type in. So we've got to make like two changes to get that to happen, maybe three. When we create our dialog, we need to pass in this text variable. But I want to make sure everybody's got this running up to this point before we start recklessly hacking it. All right, let me come back there. Why are you displaying a upgrade to Camtasia message? Anyways, all righty. So what's next is we're letting them type in some text, but it's not showing up in the window, right? Or actually, I mean, I'm typing in some text. I want to see that word, those words, in our little message. So when we create our my dialog, we're going to pass this in as an argument. So where it says root, my dialog root, make it my dialog root comma text. Wave your fingers if you don't have that typed in yet, because I'm going to scroll it off. All right, now up here, we need to accept that argument as a parameter. So comma, we could call a message, M-E-S-G. So init, self, comma, parent, comma, message. And then this line right here. So I just changed this line, right? I just added message. Don't add this comment. Don't add those hashtags. And I'm changing this line right here where it says label. Change va um, value, take the quotes off and everything, and replace it with message. Change value to MSG. Let's see if it works and if it displays our message. says input X, which is what it said. And if we went back down to our dialog, were we hitting OK on yours, or were we hitting the closed box? All right. Bizarre. OK. We need to make it handle if they click the closed box without typing in anything, because that's causing it to crash. Yeah, but we're not going to fix that right now. We've got bigger, bigger fish to fry. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it ask for a turtle command. We better have a turtle first. We don't have a turtle. We're not going to be drawing anything. So I'm just going to comment this x equals get input out for now. And by the way, now that we have all these red text strewn through here, we can delete them for clarity. All right, let's create a turtle. Import turtle, all lowercase. Leo equals turtle dot capital T turtle. Leo is just the name of our turtle. We have to give it some name. Just to make sure he's working, we're going to make him go forward a couple pixels. Leo dot FD for forward. 100. Just to make sure he's working. And then we're going to call our dialog just to see what it looks like waiting for the turtle to work. X equals get, I could have just copied and pasted, get underscore input, enter turtle command, end quote, in parentheses, just because I want to see how that looks. All right, check it out. We've got a turtle moving and we've got a place where we can enter commands. And we're going to let it go up north, south, east, west, something like that. Or we could just let us type in forward, left, or right, right, and then type in a number of angles to go. That'd be three commands. We could keep adding commands, too, like changing his speed and all sorts of things. Since I have a syntax 
Let me peek. Let's see. Oh, you need a capital. Capital T right there. We don't really want them to start off going for, forward 100. That was just to test things out. So you're going to redline him. I mean, not that it breaks the code, but I don't want him moving until I tell him to. So here we go. Enter turtle command. What kind of commands are we going to support? Maybe we ought to make a string called commands. So commands equals quote enter. Ah, let's just say command. We know he's a turtle. Enter command. Left. Right. D for forward, followed by a number. Now that's too much text. We probably need to put a backslash in in there somewhere. Like in front of the word followed. Backslash in there. And then maybe even here. Backslash in there. And instead of F is or instead of get input inner turtle command, let's just send our commands string into that to display. Commands. Alright, inner command. Left, right, F D followed by a number. Now it doesn't work yet, right? And we need if the Enter key, closed it, right? Instead, we're going to have to type OK each time. All right. It's kind of working on my screen. I'll come back there. Recorder. OK, so we changed this just a little bit to get it to fit on my screen. We split it up into two lines. If you feel like doing the same thing, put a plus, an end quote, and a plus there and an opening quote and type all that there. This is actually the new part or stop to quit. Let's see how it looks. Invalid syntax. Alrighty, I shouldn't have done that. It's going to all have to be on one line. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to read it. And that can't possibly actually be true, but I should probably be using that triple quote business. All right, enter command, left, right, FD, followed by number, or stop to quit. Now, it doesn't handle any of these, and it's not in an infinite loop and stuff like that. Now, well, here's what we're going to do. X is a boring variable name, so let's like call it CMD or something like that. Delete that X and change it to CMD. And then we're going to have a while loop. Now, what is our sentinel value? What's the value that's supposed to stop our loop from working? It's right here inside our string. Stop. Okay. So, while CMD not equal, quote, stop, end quote, colon. Now, just to test it out, I'm going to print a message. Okay, in parentheses. We're going to change that. And then we're going to get our next command. Right? This is just for test purposes. We're going to fix that in a minute. And then underneath that print, cmd equals get underscore input. I could have copied and pasted this. Commands. Parentheses commands again. I just want to get our loop structure in place. All right. If I type in something, it should say OK. If I type in something again, it should say OK. Finally, when I type stop, value is stop and it quitted. Quitted, it quit. Okay, so we're going to fix that as soon as I'm sure. 
that is working for everybody. Are we good? Okay. So, print OK is dumb. I'm going to delete that line. Sorry, Michael, I just made you test it. Type it in. I deleted that print OK message. Everybody do that. And then type in print. Command entered is, end quote, comma, command. Just so we know. Just so we see. Then we're going to split it. What does split mean? It, it means that if it's something separated by spaces or separated by commas, it turns it into a list. I like capital L as my list variable. But we could just use CMD. CMD equals CMD dot split parentheses space quotes, excuse me, quote space quote in parentheses. <coughs> Now we need some if statements. We need to see what they typed in. First, let's rule out that they type stop. All right, because if they type stop, we don't want to do anything. Well, I guess if they typed in stop, we're pretty much guaranteed, right? We've already handled that case. So, what commands did we say we were going to support? Left, right, and forward. Let's do forward first. So, if CMD subscript zero equals equals quote FD end quote colon. We're going to make our turtle go forward. Leo's got to go forward. Leo dot FD. We need to get the distance that he's supposed to go. So I'm going to add something above Leo FD. D for distance, X for distance, X equals float parentheses cmd subscript one because it's the second part of the list in sub um, in subscript in parentheses and then we're going to do forward dot excuse me leo dot fd x that's how many pixels he's supposed to go Now, while some of y'all are catching up, the others who typed quickly, I want you to try to change this, copy and paste it so that if he goes left, he makes a Leo dot left turn. And if they type in right, he makes a Leo dot right turn. So yeah, you could just copy and paste it and make a couple of changes. I have to make sure it worked. Yeah, I didn't run it. Got to make sure it works. I'm feeling good about myself, and then it suddenly stops working. All right, forward 200. Forward space 200. Woo! -hoo! It worked. Forward negative 900. There it goes. Okay, cool. It's working on my screen. Let me go back there and help y'all. All right, I need to catch up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this business, paste it twice so that I can make him go left and right. And I could make it Elif. For some reason, my pasting twice seemed to look a little bit weird. Okay, so I'm going to handle left first. So if they type in left, he goes left. If you type in right, he goes right. And then I'm going to test them out. Unindent does not match. Aha, see I've got, you thought you were the only one to get indentation problems. Left, 90. Okay. 
forward 100. Right 45. I really wish that as soon as we hit enter it did it. We might try to figure out the how to do that. It'd probably take just a little bit of Googling. What if you put up or down? Well, that's not going to work. It probably won't do a dang thing. It'd be nice if we printed an error message. But we can make up or down work, or north and south, or east and west, right? That might be fun. But let's, what I'm curious about is how to make it so that when we hit enter, right, so I can type in uh, forward 100 and hit enter, that it triggers the OK. I want to see if it's complicated to do that. All right, and I'm going to pause the recording so that y'all don't have to watch me do it. All right, we're going to give it a try. If it doesn't work, we're not going to try too long. Going to have to go back to our init method inside our class. Come on, where's the stretcher? There we go. Going back up to init. And we're going to try to bind the return key to the OK function. What does bind mean? It means that as soon as we hit enter, it's going to trigger an action. So, either before or after parent withdraw, doesn't really matter where, self dot parent, actually I just think it's parent dot bind. Erase that. Parent dot bind parentheses quote and we're gonna have to type this exactly it looks like with a capital R less than and then the word return with a cap R return end cap excuse me end uh, brace greater than you have a capitalized return capital R there yep and after the end quote, after the, end, the greater than end quote, comma, OK, because that's the button we want to be clicked if they hit enter. And if this doesn't work, we're just going to comment it out. And it should have been self.ok. That's why I got OK is not defined. So self.ok. Why? Because OK is a part of my dialog. And so we have to call ourselves in order to get it to work. All righty. Left 90. I don't think it worked. Well, poo. We're not going to waste our time. Sorry, couldn't figure it out. Delete that line. Take scripting with me and we'll have it fixed by next semester. Eh? All right, just delete that parent.bind line. That did not work. We have a little bit of time left. I'd like to make the turtle do more things. What can he do besides just going left and right and forward? Michael had a good suggestion, like going up and down or, uh, you know, north, south, east, and west. Fortunately, there's an easy way to do that. We just have to set his heading. I need to check the syntax. I think it's just set underscore heading, but I don't want to get it wrong. Make y'all type the wrong thing. So turtle set heading Python. Set heading. All right, that'll do it. So if they type north, I'm going to set the heading to 90 degrees. Unlike the real world, 0 degrees is due east, 90 is north, 180 is, so we can handle that. So why don't we copy and paste this? Nah, 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 let's not copy and paste because we're not going to need the X 
value. Unless we're going to go forward that many after we type it. Like if we type north space 100, that'd be awesome. So yeah, let's go ahead and copy this stuff. Copy one of your little command blocks. Paste it. Make sure the indention's right. And then if they type in north, I deleted that leo.write call. So make sure it says x is equal to float cmd, but then we're going to modify it. We're going to set our heading first. Leo dot, gosh, was it underscore? My memory is shot. Nope. Leo dot set heading, no underscores, parentheses 90. Like I said, 90 is due north. And then let's go forward the amount they specified. But what if they didn't specify a value? Well, too bad. We're going to make them specify a value because we said always follow it with a number, didn't we? Leo dot fdx. Right, so turn north and then go forward that many. And I'm going to add a comment here so that you can finish implementing these. South is 270. West is 180. East is 0. So copy and paste this block and just make it go the right heading. Why don't I test it first before I have you doing all that? Ooh, hoo, hoo. See, blew it up because why? Because I added a C style comment rather than a Python comment. And I just closed my window. Brilliant. Open recent files. All right. I want to go north 50. Cool. <coughs> Looks like it worked. We definitely need to make it so that if it closes, it doesn't blow up like that. You have to figure out how to do that. So yeah. Oh, by the way, anybody need syntax error correction before you start implementing south? OK. Pasted it so that I can make it go south, which is 270. So I can make it go east, which is 0, and west, which is 180. Okay. 90. Wait, what does 90 mean? That's not right. North 90, yep. South 180. Oh, that's fun. You can watch him do a little spin. West 70. Got to get that button binding business to work, but I don't think we're going to. East 100. All right. It'd be pretty neat if we did things like if we erased it, typed in erase, it would erase it all. But I'm not sure how to do that. All right. We have to fix this so that if you hit X, it doesn't blow up. So I think we can do that. Anybody need me to slow down so you can finish entering southeast and west? Yeah, I have to All right. Let me stop it. Improvements I could see making is if we type in north without a number, just make him turn north without going anywhere. I don't know yeah, if we're going to do that. I tried to do it. I don't know if we're going to do that. We would have to add some if statements inside of all of these. Yeah, you have your instance. Okay, okay, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it, guys. Come up here. And after we split the command, we're going to check the length of the command. And if the command has two entries in it, we're going to set x equal to whatever. But if not, we're going to set x equal to 0. 
So right here where it says command split, we're going to add if len cmd, if our command list equals equals 1, then we don't have an x value. If len parentheses cmd equals equals 1 colon x equals 0, we're going to default to 0. Else colon, and by the way, even though I had you add LFs, nobody else added the LFs until we put a good place for them. Else x equals float parentheses cmd open square one close square close parentheses. Now you see this line here x equals float and x equals float and x equals float all over the place. Delete all of those. We only want one x equals float and that's in the else clause right here. So get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one. I'm going to delete my comments here. Get rid of that one, get rid of that one, that one, and we, it looks like we have about eight of them. What is it you're getting rid of? I'm getting rid of, here, let me show you float. again. Yep, x equals float on every one of them except that else statement. Because we don't need to do it twice, we just need to do it once. And, and leave the Leo that forward? Yep, yep, we're not going to stop him from going forward, we're just going to stop him from trying to calculate how many. All right, I bet that if we just type north, he'll turn north. Yep, south. I'll bring the code back up. Neat, I'm happy. Now left without a number doesn't make any sense, right? So it doesn't do anything. Forward without a number doesn't do any make any sense, but at least north, south, east, and west work. Okay, last thing, in my opinion, besides maybe a circle command, is to make it so that if we click the little close box, then it doesn't crash. Mine doesn't crash for me. Oh, yeah? If you click the uh, X here, doesn't print out an error message? I don't, I don't ever click there. I hit OK. Right, you always click OK, but... We don't want that button to make it happen. So way up here in the knit, this might work, might not. Self dot value equals capital N none, which is a special value, meaning we don't really have another value. And it's okay if you don't remember all this. You're going to hit it again in scripting. Self.value equals none. I added that to the top of my init. And we're going to come down here. And we're going to check. Right here, before we call split. If CMD equals equals capital N none colon, we're just going to break. We're all done. And I put that above the, slit, the split command. So north, click the close, the X. All right. I liked it. I like it. It doesn't crash. I see one more bug, though. If I hit run module and the very first thing is I close the X, oh, boy, why do you know? It didn't crash. Awesome. Okay. I, th I expected that to crash. I think we're done. Unless we're going to add a circle command. So did everybody get that one working? There were two changes we had to make.
In the init function, we had to set self.value equal to none. And then above dot split, way down in our main code. Above that, we had to do if command equals equals none. Break. If you haven't done one, add a circle command. Just copy and paste one of these. You're not going to have to set the heading. Just call leo.circle. So if here's what I did is I copied and pasted it, and I'm going to change that to circle. I'm going to delete the set heading line. We don't need to set our heading when we draw a circle. And instead of leo.fd or whatever it is, I'm going to make it circle. Now we're going to notice something. It always draws a circle going one side. Like, I don't remember if it's veering off to the left or to the right. It'd be neat to find a way to make it do the other, but we're not going to. And on my, on my box, my value box, it doesn't have a X because this is Mac. Okay, cool. So I drew a circle, and then I'm going to go north, and I'm going to draw another circle. Yay. And I'm going to go east. No, wait, we've already drawn one to the east. South. Circle 100. All right, seems to be working. And a west. Yeah, it blew up, but that's okay. I typed in circle space, right? I added a space and I broke it, so I'm not going to mess with it. Circle, circle, circle.